Developed by Out of the Blue Games and released in 2020, today we're going to roam a puzzling monolithic island in search of answers about the expedition that came before us. Come on! Come on. Yes. Ah! This episode's game is a first-person adventure puzzle game that doesn't do the adventuring or the puzzling especially well. There's flashes of brilliance, including creative story moments and clever puzzle design. But the question is, is it worth fighting through mediocrity for a few moments of wonder? Oh my, this is so beautiful. In this episode, I'll keep things spoiler-free, but because this is a puzzle game, you might want to tune out early on, or skip to the end of the video to hear my conclusion and overall recommendations. Let's start with the presentation. Call of the Sea has a pleasant, colourful and clean aesthetic. It has a tone driven by the spirit of early 1900s expeditionary adventures. From Tintin to Tomb Raider, this is a familiar setup for a story. Adventurers run aground in an unfamiliar and hostile environment. Call of the Sea refreshes the premise with two twists. Firstly, you are not on the initial expedition that fails and falls apart. You are the wife of one of the early adventurers. When he doesn't come back, you set out to track down the expedition and investigate what happened to them. Secondly, H.P. Lovecraft has cast a spell on this story. I am definitely losing my mind. If you're not familiar, Lovecraft is the early 1900s author responsible for blending Elder Gods, Cosmic Horror, and creepy seaside towns. He's the man behind the Cthulhu mythos, and his influence in Call of the Sea is palpable. Your character, Nora, is a woman with a mysterious family affliction and a serious drive to track down her missing husband, Harry. She's played well by voice actress Sissy Jones, who gives Eleanor a rounded personality with a whimsical, curious, and sometimes sentimental tone. The story unfolds through Nora's narration, a journal, dream sequences, finding notes and photographs, and occasionally a simple animated sequence whenever you find a letter from your missing husband. My main criticism of the storytelling in Call of the Sea is you will find an insane amount of notes and letters. I cannot imagine why a small group of people trapped on an island living in the same camp would bother to write each other so many letters. As an alternative, this game would have benefited from more environmental storytelling. As it stands, you discover a huge amount of information just from picking up pieces of paper, and only a small amount from environmental observation and scenes created in the world through art assets, objects, and the recreation of static scenes. Oh, damn it. Someone on the expedition died. Overall, presentation is impressive for a game made by a small team, and it's doubly impressive that in my playthrough Call of the Sea performed smoothly and I didn't encounter any bugs. If I can make another small criticism of the presentation, the music is lacking. The voice work, sound effects, and the ambient sound are engrossing and bring the world and story alive, but the music is sparse and forgettable. Music doesn't need to be everywhere all of the time, but a more distinctive theme or some unique instrumentation in the later parts of the game would help Call of the Sea from slipping under into mediocrity. Let's move on to gameplay, where the mediocrity really comes out to play. Unfortunately, you can tell that presentation and puzzles received the lion's share of the developer's attention. Gameplay in Call of the Sea is unfortunately uninspired. There are three core gameplay mechanics. Movement, examination, and puzzle interaction. To begin, let's briefly break down all of these components, because they factor into the main gameplay discussion about the quality of the puzzle design. Movement first. It sucks. Your standard walking and swimming speed is catastrophically slow. The only possible use this could have would be for avoiding obstacles or maneuvering in smaller spaces to help highlight items, but none of these things really are required. Items are always in plain sight and there are invisible walls on everything, so you're never at risk of falling or slipping off something. Despite all this, sprinting is uncomfortably slow as well. I spent the entire game holding down the trigger in order to sprint everywhere, and was still frustrated at how long it took me to move around the world. 
A special shout out to Ladders for having long entry and exit animations and climbing times that would embarrass a snail. The second lackluster gameplay mechanic is examination. You can pick up items and comment on things by looking at them, which is important as Nora will sometimes make notes about objects that she finds in her notebook. Making a note means the item or the information is relevant to a puzzle. There is some frustration with this as some items are temperamental about when you can interact with them. For example, in the second area, there are objects that are interactive but only within a certain range. I had noticed them when I arrived in the area and I did my initial assessment, but I could not progress the puzzle because I had not actually interacted with the items. So I had to go back later on and re-examine them at a different distance until the prompt appeared and then Nora could observe them properly and make a note about them in her journal. Examining items that you pick up, like letters and pictures, is fine. You can rotate and zoom on items, but there's never really anything that's useful to be discovered this way. The game even has an unfortunate little prompt that tells you that there's something on the back of the letter or photo, which ruins the point of being able to flip stuff around and trying to discover hidden information on objects. There's no inventory to speak of, except for being able to pick up keys and some quest objects. It's all very plain. Although I will say that the log, the mission log, is a critical tool for solving puzzles, and also working out if you're missing bits of information. The third and equally mediocre gameplay mechanic is puzzle interaction. This is uninspiring as well. Almost everything is just press a button, pull a lever, trace a line. There's no tools or equipment, and later on in the game you gain a special ability that I won't spoil, but I will say that it is shockingly underused in the puzzles themselves. I just want to reiterate that that particular criticism is about how you interact with puzzles. I'm not talking about the puzzle design yet, or the puzzles themselves, just about how you interact with puzzle components. Now, what exactly do I do? So now that we know that the movement is poor, the examination of items and puzzle interaction is dull, let's get into the heart of the gameplay, which is the overall puzzle design. This is Call of the Sea's saving grace. Despite having mediocre mechanics, the game manages to pull off some excellent puzzles. Despite your limited modes of puzzle interaction, Call of the Sea injects a heap of variety by having a good range of puzzles. Most boil down to some form of visual or abstract recognition, predicting sequences or decoding information. If you've ever done an escape room experience in real life, Call of the Sea is similar to that. You generally tackle one puzzle at a time and can only complete the puzzle when you have all of the information that is relevant to its solution. On a few occasions, those solutions are genuinely satisfying and make you feel clever for getting through them. And that's no small achievement for any game, especially a puzzle game. There are a few problematic moments where through exploration, you might encounter contraptions that are relevant to a future puzzle, but not a puzzle in and of themselves. And they're very easy moments where you can get stuck. There are a few accidental red herrings like this that could have been tightened up with clearer level design, a bit more playtesting, making comment in the narration, or some more useful note-taking. Well, that did something. Generally, the puzzles are well paced and they won't recycle mechanics frequently, so each area and mystery feels set apart from the others. Without getting into spoilers, I will say the biggest issue with the puzzles is towards the end of the game, they start to feel padded out with switches and buttons placed frustratingly far from each other in overly large environments, neither of which suits a puzzle game with agonizingly slow movement. So that's Call of the Sea. It's a well-presented game with some humdrum mechanics and a few satisfying puzzle solves. The real tragedy of Call of the Sea is that apart from its presentation and its Lovecraftian story, it's a below average video game with a couple of above average puzzles. In my reviews, I don't give scores or tell everyone to buy a game, so here are my qualified recommendations for Call of the Sea. I recommend Call of the Sea if you like Mist, The Outer Wilds, Portal, The Witness, or Antichamber. Some of the puzzles in Call of the Sea are really strong, 
even if the other gameplay elements are comparatively weak. Set your expectations low and play it without a guide, like I did. My God. I also recommend Call of the Sea if you love HP Lovecraft or are a fan of story-driven walking simulators like What Remains of Edith Finch, Firewatch or Soma. If that's you, play Call of the Sea with a guide for the puzzles. For everyone else, I do not recommend Call of the Sea. The secret to making a great puzzle game is to invent, adapt, or use game mechanics in your puzzle design. Video games are a medium where you can play with mechanics and level design and perspective, colour and time and physics and all sorts of different variables that should open up a almost Pandora's box of creative puzzle opportunities. Great adventure puzzle games I mentioned like Portal, Antichamber, The Outer Wilds and The Witness all take advantage of the fact that they are video games to challenge the player in new and interesting ways. At its best, Call of the Sea is a few great traditional puzzles trapped in a well-presented but ultimately mediocre adventure game. Thanks for listening and take care.